بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد uh, Today إن شاء الله we will discuss uh, the fourth unit, unit four uh, a reading passage the title of this unit is traditions Okay. so I will start reading إن شاء الله he says every culture values the family and no family begins without a marriage for this reason, marriage and marriage customs and traditions are and have always been given great importance throughout the world. That said, not all cultures have the same traditions. Below is a selection of customs and traditions from across the world. Uh, and then we will be talking about like traditions in different parts of the world, especially marriage. Uh, this relationship between a uh, woman and a man. Uh, we will be traveling, inshallah, from England to China to different parts of the world. So the second paragraph says, England, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and a sixpence in my shoe. It is like a proverb. On uh, the method, proverb. This proverb says, uh, this paragraph starts with England, something old, something new. It's like they bring something old and something new, and they, uh, they have something borrowed, something from different parts, a different part of the world. Yeah, and they, uh, in a way, borrow uh, some traditions from uh, other cultures. Something blue and a sixpence in my shoe. We will read, inshallah. Uh, so neatly combining a number of Victorian customs. This rhyme mentions five things which, when worn, are said to bring good luck to the bride. The something old was meant to tie the bride to her family and her past, while the something new represented her new life as the property of a new family. The item borrowed was supposed to be taken from someone who was already successfully married wife, so as to pass on a bit of her good fortune to the new bride. The color blue signified a number of noble traits like faithfulness, loyalty, and purity. The sixpence, of course, was meant to bring the bride and her new groom actual cold heart fortune. A bride of your also carried bunches of herbs toward of evil spirits. Now, however, it has become more prevalent to replace these herbs with expensive out-of-season peonies. In an high paragraph, it describes uh, the customs of uh, marriage, especially in England. He says, or he refers here to what? The, the writer here, here refers to uh, the old uh, customs and the new customs that are, uh, in a way, uh, supposed to be to appear in uh, in marriage. Okay. Fahon uh, who is traveling from the past to the new. He says, for example, in this paragraph, he says. Uh, the uh, uh, what, what what do we mean by old? Old what relates the girl, the bride, to her family, to her family. While the new, that means she is uh, moving to a different uh, level. Uh, she is reaching a, a, a family. She is making like a connection uh, with another family. And then that is to be new. Okay. The third paragraph, the third paragraph, still in England. So the title of this, the subtitle of this says, England refusing to throw away the leftovers. Another English custom for the bride and the groom is to save some of the wedding cake for the duration of a whole year to be eaten at the celebration of this first anniversary. Imagine that. Some of the cake is kept to, uh, uh, 
uh, to the end of the year to celebrate what? To celebrate their first anniversary. They celebrate, how do they celebrate the anniversary? They celebrate it by what? By saving some cake, some wooden cake uh, for the whole year in order to mark that this cake is just like a memory of uh, of a whole year. Uh, line number four says, the logic behind this is referred in the old rhyme first, in the old rhyme, first comes love, this is a rhyme, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a baby in a baby carriage. It's like a song, right? First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a baby in a baby carriage. It is used to be assumed that when there was a wedding, the pitter patter of tiny foot of feet would be sure to follow. There would be a, a baby after that. There would be a baby after wedding. So rather than bake two cakes for the for the occasion, yani one cake for the wedding and the other cake for, for what? For the baby. So rather than take two cakes for the occasions, they just take one big one and save a part of it to be eaten at a later date when the sequeling bundle of joy arrived. Although this tradition is no longer kept alive, the idea of saving some of the cake for a later date is still alive in the bride and the groom taste but then this is Russia, uh, this tradition has changed into another one but it marks uh, a good part of uh, English uh, or uh, of England in particular uh, in the next paragraph we are going to travel to China in China let's see how um, uh, marriage takes place in China China retreating to the cockloft. In China, as the family prepares for her impending departure, the bride-to-be retreats from the ordinary routine and lives in seclusion in a separate part of the house with her closest friends. Another tradition, which is very strange in China, the bride, the girl, takes a uh, or goes to another place uh, inside the house. She changes her room. She is now isolated from uh, uh, her family. Let's see why. Uh, during this period, the young woman sank laments, mourning the bride's separation from her family and cursing the go-between, as well as the groom's family and even the girl's own parents. Unleash because the, the, she is going to leave her family. While she is going to leave her family, that means this is or this marks a sad, uh, in a way, sad occasion or a bad occasion for uh, the the bride and for her uh, family. It marks sadness in this case. They are mourning. They are uh, the women saying like laments, laments, and they what? Uh, to mark that this bride is going to separate from her family as well as the groom's family and even the girl's own parents. Since this extended sleepover often took place in the cook loft, the bride's emergence on her wedding day was sometimes referred to as coming out of the cook loft. Mm -hmm. 